Welcome to Exogeology Rocks, episode 10. I'm here today with Rosalie Lopez, a planetary scientist at JPL, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. She specializes in the geology and volcanology of the planets. Would you please tell us a little bit more about what you do? Well, I started out as an astronomy student, but I became quite fascinated by geology of the planets, and in particular, volcanoes. So we have volcanoes on Earth, but also volcanoes on Venus, on Mars, on Mercury, uh, and actual volcanoes on Io, and um, uh, strange ice volcanoes uh, on Enceladus, and uh, uh, probably other moons of the outer solar system as well. So at the moment, I'm studying the geology of Titan, uh, Saturn's largest moon, and I'm trying to figure out uh, if we have volcanic features there. I have also done a lot of work on Io, which I think is the most exciting object in the solar system. So why is Io the most exciting? Io is the most exciting because it's the only place outside the Earth where we have actually seen active volcanism in the sense of molten rock. Uh, we have seen uh, ice volcanism, uh, like plumes of vapor coming out of Enceladus, but in terms of molten rock, uh, is only uh, Earth and Io, which are currently active, that we know of. And uh, um, Io has many um, uh, active uh, volcanoes, and is the most volcanically active part in the solar system. Wow. So, what's the most exciting thing that you've done? Well, actually, I think the most exciting, the most fun, was when I uh, worked on the Galileo mission. And uh, we knew that Io had active volcanism, uh, but from the Voyager data, which was the spacecraft that went earlier, um, uh, we talk, had about a dozen volcanoes, uh, active volcanoes. And uh, I worked with the Near Infrared Mapping spectrom Spectrometer, or NIMS, and uh, that's an instrument that detects heat. Uh, so, um, you know, actually, I found 71 new active volcanoes on Io, oh, and, uh, wow. and I even ended up in the 2006 Guinness Book of World Records. Oh, <laughs> wow. So that was, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> that sounds mm -hmm. like fun. Yeah. So what's the funniest thing you've done then? Well, you could say that ending up in the Guinness Book of World Records was, <laughs> <laughs> was actually pretty funny, but uh, uh, th there are a lot of, um, uh, you know, sort of funny things that uh, that happen in uh, uh, space missions. Um, I mean, one of them, uh, and a lot of discoveries come sort of by chance. Um, and uh, one of them was, you know, we had we were very downlink constrained on Galileo because our main antenna didn't open. So we had a small antenna and the data sort of dribbled down to Earth. So we couldn't take very large observations in terms of data and it was always a fight about you know, which observations we're going to make. And then, um, uh, and sometimes just your observation got kicked out of the, the, the sequence oh. or the timeline because um, uh, somebody else wanted to observe there and they had a better argument. So, you know, I had these observations of Io plant uh, on a particular um, orbit that the spacecraft was doing flying by Io. Close, not, not very close to Io, but it, um, you know, and they said, well, you know, this observation here, you can't have it because somebody else uh, wants that time. But if you find a gap in the timeline, you can put it somewhere else and it will still give you the bits to ground. And um, I noticed that the camera was doing an observation. Um, it, it was pretty far away from Io and I thought, well, maybe there's a gap next to it. So I'm going to put it there just because it might be useful. Well, we happened to catch the biggest volcanic eruption we ever saw on Io. <laughs> and the combination of the um, uh, camera data, getting some data, and NIMS getting some data at almost the same time gave us some pretty exciting results, including some good constraints on the temperature of the lava. And then um, uh, we figured out that the lava might actually be hotter than any of the lavas we have on Earth today. Oh, wow. So that is pretty good timing after all. Yeah, it was. Uh, sometimes, you know, these uh, coincidences happen. <laughs> yeah. 
So if the volcanoes on Io are even hotter than on Earth, then what about the ice volcanoes you mentioned earlier? Well, the ice volcanoes are, uh, you know, totally, um, well, well, it's a totally different set of constraints. It's because the, on, on Earth and on Io, uh, you have a, a rocky solid crust and then molten rock, which is magma underneath that crust. But on the um, uh, icy moons of the outer solar system, like Enceladus, uh, uh, you have an icy crust and, uh, uh, and, and the temperatures are so cold that the ice is behaving like rock. And you have liquid water under that icy crust. And if that liquid water actually breaks through and comes to the surface, that's volcanism. But the, quote, magma for that object is actually water. Wow. We call it cryovolcanism. That's really cool, literally. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> So how exactly did you get into volcanoes? What made them so interesting? Well, I was an, an astronomy student at University College London, and in my last year I was taking a class in planetary geology. And, um, uh, and, and one day the professor didn't show up, and uh, he sent uh, like a teaching assistant, a postdoc, who came in and said, uh, well, Mount Etna in Sicily erupted and the professor had to go. And I thought, this sounds really exciting. So I decided to do my PhD with that professor because um, you know, I was kind of tired of uh, you know, uh, freezing at astronomical observatories, you know, and I wanted to travel to volcanoes and do something exciting. So I'm very adventurous, I'm kind of an explorer, really, and, uh, and I have been lucky enough to um, visit many, many active volcanoes on Earth. So you get to travel a lot then? Yes, I have uh, you know, traveled quite a bit. And uh, I have been to uh, volcanoes on every continent except Antarctica. And uh, I'm still hoping. <laughs> well, you should go then and finish off the whole list, do a little series. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping. <laughs> so last of all, do you have any advice for kids who want to get into planetary science? Uh, well, um, I think that for everybody, it's really important to do what you love. So if you're really excited by planetary science or whatever it is, um, you should try to work in that field because um, then work doesn't seem like work, you know, it seems like fun a lot of the time. Uh, but if you become a scientist, you have to be prepared to um, never feeling that comfortable that you know your stuff really well because you always have to keep learning. And uh, you get new data and you realize that some of the things that you thought were true before are not true. And that's the way that science progresses, is that uh, you know, you're constantly finding out new things and finding out that what you knew before wasn't quite right. Wow, that's some good advice. Always keep learning because things keep changing. So thank you very much for talking with us today. Pleasure talking to you. It's been great hearing from you. Great. So this has been Exogeology Rocks, episode 10. Thanks for watching.